Hello everyone, welcome to our new R programming tutorial video. Today we continue our journey in R with conditional statements. Last time we have covered labels, data types and data structures. You can check that video using the link on the right corner. Let's begin with our today's subject. We will answer the following questions. What is condition and how is it defined in R? How one can check conditions in R? Additionally, we will show you if, if else, if else, if else structures in R. And lastly, we will cover if else function in R. Let's start with defining condition. A condition shows comparison of two objects that are the same type. They have a logical value which are true or false. They can be done via six operators. You can check equality or inequality. And you can also check if they are numeric, less than or greater than, or less than or equal or greater than or equal statements. Let's see them on an example. Let us create two variables and then use the operators. Suppose that var1 equal to 5 and var2 equal to 6. Whenever we check equality, we will get false. Let's see them on the screen. So var1 equal to var2 will return false. And whenever we print them, it will return false. And as they are unequal, they are not equal. Whenever we check inequality, we should get true, which is the case also. As var1 and var2 are numerics, we can also compare them using less than or greater than or less than or equal or greater than or equal. And since var1 less than var2, both less than and less than or equal to should return true and vice versa. And as I said, this operation will return logical variable. So we can also check the type. So var1 not equal to var2 will return true and type of true is a logical. So we see what the condition is and how they are defined in R. Then we can move on to if statements. So suppose that you want to do something depending on a condition, then it's a perfect time using if statements. So, for if statements, you need a condition and a statement whenever this condition is met. So, this is the general structure. Let's see it on an example. Suppose that x is 10 and y is 1. So, depending on the, the state, the condition, we will execute a statement. So, we check whether x is greater than y, whenever it is the case, then we will print x is greater, which is the case in this example. So we can also use not equal to operator. As they are not equal to, our condition will be met and then our print function will be called. Note that since this is only one statement, then we can also omit these curly braces, which is also the case in, in this line. So if x is not equal to y, then print x is not equal to y. So we, we just simply omit curly braces. However, if you need to execute more than one statement, then you need these curly braces. Depending on the situation, you may need also else statements. So if the condition is met, you will, do, you will do one statement. Otherwise, you will do another statement. So you can think this as a binary condition. So let's see again on an example. Suppose that this time our x is equal to 10 and our y is equal to 10. So obviously they are equal. If x is equal to y, then we will print x is equal to y, else, which means x is not equal to y, we will print x is not equal to y. 
So since they are equal, our code will execute this and we will execute this print x is equal to y function. And we will miss this part as this condition is met. Let's see another example. This time, we will change our value of y and set it to 1. So this time, our condition will not be met. Then we will execute the function inside the else. Thus, x is not equal to y will be printed, which is also the case in your screen. However, we can also have more than one conditions. For that type, we need else if statements. So we will first have an if condition. Then if this condition is not met, we will go to else. And then we will start again another condition, another if statement. So this is this checks two different conditions and then go to the else condition. However, you can also increase the number of conditions as long as you want. Let us create one example of this type. So suppose that x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 10. So if x is equal to y, then we will print x is equal to y. Else if, if x is greater than y, then x is not equal to y because this condition is not met and this condition is met and we know that they are not equal and x is greater than y. So we will print that x is not equal to y and x is greater than y. So And if this condition is not also met, then we will go to this else one because we have only three different options. Either they are equal or one is greater than the other. So if we will come to here, then it means that x is not equal to y and also x is not greater than y. So x is not equal to y and y is greater than x, which also means x is less than y. So whenever we run this code, we will end up the last line, which is x is not equal to y and x less than y. So it is also maybe the case that we may have more than one condition in one if statement. So the syntax is the following. So to combine two conditions with end, you need to use end sign, double end sign. And if you want to combine two conditions with or, then you need to use this sign. And the other parts are the same as the above. So let's do an example for these two conditions. Suppose that we have x equal to 14, y equal to 12, and z equal to 16. If x is greater than y or x is greater than z, then we will print that x is greater than y or z, which is also the case. So since x is greater than y, then this is true or this is false. True or false means true, then our print function will be executed. So whenever you have or, one of the, if one of the conditions are true, then this condition will be true. And if this is end, let's see on, let's see that case on the other example. Let x equal to 12, y equal to 15, z equal to 10. So if x greater than y and x is greater than z, then which means that x is the greatest, then we will print x is the greatest. Since that is not the case, since y is greater than x, this will return false. 
and this will return true. So false and true returns false, then this print function is not executed. So that we are not see we are not seeing any output. So we have covered many stuff. Let's wrap up them. So we have seen if statement, if else statement, and if else if else statement. Lastly, we have seen the uh, combining two conditions or more than two, more than one conditions in a single statement. So we can move on to nested if statements. Nested if statements can be used in a setting that where you may need one if condition inside of an another if condition. You can also think that this is as a one statement. So whenever this condition is met, this statement will be executed, which is another if condition. So this can this can be practical in some times. Let us create an example. Suppose that x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 10. So if x is not equal to y, then it means that either x is greater than y or vice versa. And if this condition is not met, I mean, if this is false, then it means that x is equal to y. So whenever we run the code, then we will see that x is not equal to y and x is less than y since this this condition is met and this condition is not met then the code will execute this print function we can also write this as nested if condition and also if if else and else condition and let's see our last example the if else function so as you see Conditional statements are not vector operations in R, so they can only process a single value. The if-else function works with a vector and it checks the condition for each element of the vector and then selects elements from the specified vector depending upon the result. So the syntax is the following. So you have the name of the function, if-else, then you need a condition and you need two more stuff. One is true vector, one is false vector. So whenever the condition is not met, the function will go to false vector. And whenever it is true, then the function goes to true vector. So let's see on an example. Suppose that we have a vector consisting of integers from 11 till 16. And whenever this vector has an even number, then it will print even, and whenever it has odd, then it will print odd. What is our condition? Whenever the one of the elements of this vector is divided by two, and the remainder will be zero, and it means that it is even, and vice versa. So as you see, as we start with 11, and this is not true, then it will say out. And for 12, since it is true, and it will say even. So it goes like this. So today we have covered the conditional statements in R. We have seen if statements, if else statements, if else if else statements, and also nested if statements. We have also covered multiple conditions in a single if statement. Lastly, we have seen if else function. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. We will be happy to help you. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and see you in our next videos. Bye bye.